Hi, I'm Ted McDonald, a member of the OpenDXL development team. In this series of videos, we will be walking through how to get up and running with OpenDXL quickly. In this video, we are going to download the necessary tools to deploy the OpenDXL environment to allow us to easily develop integrations with OpenDXL. First, we'll head to the OpenDXL environment project in the OpenDXL GitHub organization. The OpenDXL environment provides a platform which allows a developer to immediately begin working with OpenDXL. The environment comes pre-configured with prerequisites for development, such as Python 2.7, the OpenDXL Python clients, OpenDXL Bootstrap, and OS tools like Git and Curl. The environment is distributed as a Docker image. On the OpenDXL environment project wiki, we can find the setup instructions in the installation section. To begin, we'll need to download Docker. Docker is a platform which allows the deployment of containers from existing images. With Docker, we can quickly deploy containers with our OpenDXL components. For more information about Docker, you can view the documentation at docs.docker.com. As we're working with a Mac, we're following the link for Docker for Mac. And let's go ahead and hit Get Docker. Now we're downloading our Docker package. Let's extract it. All right, now let's drag Docker over to Applications to install it. All right, and now we see Docker is now available as an application. So let's go ahead and run Docker. Now that Docker is installed and we can start it up, uh, we'll also want to install Kitematic. Kitematic is a graphical interface which allows the management of our Docker containers through a convenient UI. We can launch Kitematic through the Docker menu. So let's go to the Docker menu up here in the top. And let's select Kitematic. So Docker is informing us that we haven't installed Kitematic in the right place. It's provided the download link for the Mac version of Kitematic and told us to place it in applications. So let's go ahead and download the Mac version of Kitematic. All right. And now let's install it under applications like the Docker pop-up described. In other operating systems, you can try to run Kitematic through the same Docker menu, and it will give you both the download link for that operating system and the location that it needs to be placed in in order to work. Now that we have Kitematic installed, we can go back to our Docker menu and try to run it again. And now we have Kitematic running. You can check out the Docker and Kitematic documentation for more information on how to install and configure Kitematic. Now we're ready to start deploying our OpenDXL containers. But first, before we do that, let's create a new OpenDXL directory on our local system. We can mount this directory within our containers, and it will allow us to interact with files on the local machine instead of always needing to go through the container. It will also persist these files when we need to bring up new containers and tear down old ones. So now, back in Kitematic, let's search for the OpenDXL environment. And there it is. So when we press Create, Kitematic will download the image from Docker Hub and deploy a container for us. We see on the left our new OpenDXL environment container, but we need to configure it. So let's go to the settings section and then to the volumes tab. And let's map the slash OpenDXL location to that OpenDXL folder we created earlier. We also need to set up our ports. Under the hostname slash ports section, 
we can see 8000 has already been given an arbitrary port on our local system. But let's switch it so that 8000 on our local system will be mapped to 8000 on our container. And save that. And now we're ready to work with our environment. If we go back to home, we can click on the web preview and this will open a browser taking us directly to our Cloud Commander interface. Through here, we can see all of our files within the container. And if we click on the terminal here, the rightmost option on the bottom, we can go to slash opendxl and see our mounted directory here. So anything that's affected here in the container is actually mounted on our local machine and we can interact with it there. This has been Getting Started with OpenDXL Part 1. Part 2 will show you how to deploy and configure the OpenDXL console depending on the type of fabric. There are two videos in Part 2, each covering a different type of fabric, either an existing DXL fabric managed by McAfee ePolicy Orchestrator or a new OpenDXL broker fabric. You can choose the video which will best fit your environment.